Once again, we want to say we're very thankful for our guests that we have here today. Guests, if you would uh, turn those uh, cards into the inside aisle, pass them down, be picked up at this moment. We are coming to the end of the year, getting ready for a new year, 2020. There'll be a lot of people making New Year's resolutions. Many of those resolutions will be centered around happiness. If I do this, I will be happy, or at least they think they will. Happiness is a very interesting topic. Several years ago, in the early days of the McDonald's Corporation, someone came up with a brilliant marketing strategy. They would take a little cheap toy, combine it with a small hamburger and a fry and a drink, and put it in a pretty box, and they would call it a Happy Meal. But who really is happy? You take a look at those children, 30 minutes later, they're probably not happy. Who's really happy? It's the McDonald's Corporation who has sold billions of those Happy Meals. It has led one person to say this, when you get older, you don't get any smarter, your Happy Meals just get more expensive. Adults look for happiness very often in bigger and more expensive toys. But truly, finding happiness in stuff just won't happen. The things that you got a few days ago as a gift, several of those things are already in the closet or in the garage. Happiness is based on circumstances, and circumstances change. What we really should be looking for is joy. How can you and I find true, lasting joy in 2020? Go back to the passage that Donnie just read, Nehemiah chapter 8. What's happening here? Ezra is reading the book of God, God's Word, for the first time to the people. This is what we would call today the Jewish New Year. And notice verse number 3. What does it say? It says the people were attentive. They are listening. Verse 4, Ezra has six people, six guys on his right side. He's got seven on his left side. Then in verse 5, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above the people. He was up, standing up high. And as he opened it, all the people stood in respect of God's Word, just the same way we just did a few moments ago. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Bible scholars have estimated that there could have been thirty to 50,000 people in the audience that day. Verse 7 and 8, there are several men that go out into the crowd to help explain what the people are hearing. Because Ezra is reading in Hebrew. And the Hebrew language, because of the exile, the Hebrew language was not their daily language anymore. Their daily language was Aramaic. So the people, the, the scribes would go out there and help to explain what the, the people are hearing in the Hebrew language. This takes place from sun up to the middle of the afternoon until the people understood the Bible. I propose to you this morning, if you want to find that place of real joy in 2020, then get to know God's Word. Understand it. Comprehend it. Let it touch your mind. The 2014 winner of the Pulitzer Prize for Literature is a book that's 880 pages long. That's a big book. It is estimated that 44% of the people who have purchased that book 
have never finished it at all. Thus, they are missing out on the complete story of that book. The same thing could be applied about the all-time number one best-selling book, the Bible. What a tragedy if we miss out on God's Word. We are truly missing out. We need God's Word in our lives. It's the only way to find true and lasting joy. We start by getting to know the book. The Bible. In 2020, let me urge you to really recommit to God's Word. Start by asking God to help you to fulfill that commitment. Ask God to help you to understand His Word and go from just not just reading God's Word to studying God's Word. I'd like to suggest that you... Join the Bible study if you're not already part of one. We have excellent classes on Sundays and Wednesdays. We have uh, special classes. Carl Johnson has a special class on, uh, on Tuesdays. Uh, we have ladies' classes. We have youth groups, that uh, youth Bible studies. Take advantage of these studies and get to know God's Word If you want true and lasting joy in 2020, start by getting to know God's Word. Let it touch your mind. Then second, if you want to find that place of real joy, celebrate God's Word. Don't let it just touch your mind. Let it touch your heart as well. Verse number 9. In Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. They were coming to realize that they were breaking God's word. They were coming to realize that they were coming up short in making, in meeting God's Word, and they were weeping about that. It was touching their hearts. They realized they had broke God's law, and it made them sad. It made them sad because somehow they had missed the part about God's grace and forgiveness if they would repent. Their return from Babylon and the restoration of Jerusalem was evidence of that grace. So this was not a time to weep. It was a time to rejoice. Verse number 10, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord, and do not be grieved. For the joy, circle that, the joy of the Lord is your strength. It's your strength, it's your protection, it's your refuge, it's your security. Verse 11, so the Levites calmed all the people saying, be quiet. For this day is holy, do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing, because they had understood the words that were declared to them. They had understood what God had declared to Isaiah about their time nearly 300 years previously. In Isaiah chapter 40, speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned. Despite their sin, God had forgiven them and restored them. They finally understood the good news of God's Word. And that Word... That word was gripping their heart, so they they threw a party and began to celebrate. My friends, that's exactly what we need to do 
if we want to find a true and lasting joy, let the truth of God's Word grip your heart and bring you to rejoicing. Romans chapter 8, There is therefore now no, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Don't suffer under the guilt and shame of your sins any longer. If you have had those sins forgiven, celebrate that forgiveness. Put your trust in Christ who died for your sins and rose again and rejoice in His forgiveness. Don't grieve. Celebrate what God has done as revealed in His Word. During the six years that we lived in West Memphis, we were able to help several missionaries on their way on their journey. They would come to our house and stay the night, and then I would take them to the airport in Memphis the next morning. One group of of missionaries were going to earthquake-devastated Haiti. This is a picture of just after the earthquake in the country of Haiti. Houses were demolished. Buildings were falling down. Even the building that the church was meeting in had been demolished and the Christians were meeting in just a a tent. One of those those men who went on that trip came back and told me about what he saw. He saw people there that had had arms and limbs and legs amputated because of uh, getting caught in the earthquake. And they were there worshiping and praising and singing to God. And he said something to me that I'll never forget. He said, It makes no sense to me as an entitled American who complains that the smallest inconveniences, a clogged drain or a slow Wi-Fi connection in my home, yet here in this place, many people who had lost everything express nothing but praise for God. Those people had found the secret of real joy in the face of devastating loss. What had they done? They had chose. They chose to celebrate instead of complaining. And they discovered that indeed the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord protects us from despair. It shields us from the enemy. It provides that place of security and peace. It's a decision. We only have to choose wisely. We can choose to be joyful or we can choose to complain. So what are we going to do? Are we going to complain about our situations when the small little things don't go our way? Are we going to celebrate the goodness of God who took away our sins when we obeyed His Son. Let me urge you to let the truth of God's Word grip you in your heart today and choose to celebrate. Make that decision. It's the only way to find true and lasting joy. My friends, if you want to find that place of real joy, then first of all, understand God's Word. Read it, better yet, study it. Number two, celebrate God's Word. Let it touch your heart. And third, do God's Word. Let it touch your mind, your heart, and your will. Decide now, as you approach the new year, that with God's help, you will put into practice in your own life God's Word. That's what the people of Nehemiah's day did. Notice verse 13. On the second day, the heads of the fathers' houses of all the people, with the priests and the Levites, came together to Ezra the scribe in order to study the words of the law. There they discovered the commandment to have a feast, the Feast of Booths to remind them about when God cared for them in the wilderness. And they said, hey, 
we haven't been doing this. We haven't kept God's word. We need to do this. So they took the time to prepare and they built little shacks outside the gates, outside the wall, little structures, little booths, and stayed there the prescribed length of time. And what is happening? And there was great rejoicing. Why are they rejoicing? Because they're out there living on the ground in a little shack of sticks? No, they're rejoicing because they are keeping God's Word. They are doing God's Word. And day by day, from the first day to the last day, Ezra read from the book of the law of God. They kept the feast seven days. On the eighth day, there was a solemn assembly according to the rule. They are obeying God's word. They're putting into their life God's word and they are rejoicing. They are so happy. On June the 6th, 1981, Doug Witt and his bride, Sylvia, got married at a really fancy hotel. Their wedding reception uh, lasted late into the night. The uh, hotel staff uh, escorted them up to the uh, hotel's bridal suite. When they stepped into the room, they saw a beautiful sofa, chairs, table. But they looked around. Where, where was the bed? They discovered that the sofa was a sleeper sofa, a hot of bed. So they pulled out the hot of bed and they spent that first night on the hot of bed. The next morning, Doug went down to the front desk to, uh, to complain about the room. The clerk said, um, by the way, did you happen to open the door in your room? You see, Doug had never stayed in a hotel room that was more than one room. When he got back up to the room, that door that he thought was a closet was the doorway into the bedroom where there was a waiting fruit baskets and chocolates and a beautiful bedroom. Opening all the doors in a honeymoon suite is like obeying all the words of Jesus. Discipleship is that door to real joy. Jesus said in John 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it how? Abundantly. Are you enjoying the abundant life today? Or is your life one that, well, it's not what you thought it would be? Obedience to God brings joy even when it doesn't make sense. It brings joy. It didn't make sense. It didn't make sense to Sanballat and Tobiah, the enemies of Israel, to see those Israelites outside the wall building those little shacks. I'm sure they looked at those Israelites and started saying, what are those crazy Jews doing today? Today, for us, when we live the Christian life, when we do good to people who mistreat us, when we pray for their salvation, when we work to bring good into our community, probably some people in the world look and say, those crazy Christians, what are they doing now? But what are we doing? We are applying God's Word to our lives. Obeying God, perhaps to the world, doesn't always make sense, but it brings great joy. Do you want to find true and lasting joy in 2020? Then instead of chasing happiness, choose joy. Seek to understand God's Word. Let it touch your mind. Celebrate God's Word. Let it touch your heart. But most importantly, in 2020, let's do God's Word. Let's make sure people can see Jesus living in us. Let's make sure people can know through our actions why we love the Lord. Because when we do that, 
That's when we'll find true joy. Are you a Christian this morning? I only ask you to do what the Lord Himself said to do. To believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Most of us here have done that. But as a Christian, sometimes we don't reflect Jesus to people around us. Sometimes we let sin come back into our lives and dominate our lives. Isn't it wonderful that we know that God will forgive if we'll just ask Him? 1 John 1, 9. This church stands ready to pray with you and for you this morning. Will you make that decision? We'll have two elders up here waiting for you. Will you please come when we stand and sing for your encouragement? Just as I am.